Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today, we talk about more about matrices, about what's called Gauss-Jordan elimination, which is a way to, a part of a way to solve a system of equations using matrices. So our goals, we understand the difference between what's called echelon and reduced echelon form of matrix. We'll get into that. Explain, uh, be able to use elementary raw operations, put a matrix in echelon or reduced echelon form, but probably going to put it in this reduced echelon form. We can solve a system of matrix linear equations by reducing matrix to reduced echelon form. That's actually what's called Gauss-Jordan elimination. And then from this reduced echelon form, we'll be able to identify the type of solution based on the entries in the, in the matrix in this reduced form. So first, let's explain these two particular types or names of forms of matrices. So there's one kind of matrix called echelon forms. They have an M by N matrix where M and N can be different numbers. Okay, remember M is the number of rows in the matrix and N is the number of columns. It's called the matrix B. It's an echelon form if we have three conditions. All the rows that are entirely zeros are grouped together at the bottom of the matrix. So you have those, you just move those down to the bottom of the matrix. And every non-zero row, so every row that has variables are not zeros. The first non-zero entry if going from left to right is going to be a one. And then if a row contains non-zero numbers, the first non-zero number in a column, which then would also have to be a one, is to the right of the first non-zero number entry in the row above. Okay, so let's come over here and look at some examples because just talking about that, I realize doesn't help a lot yet. So we need to look at some examples to explain what this is. And the reason why we're bringing this up is because as we'll see, as we go through and, and solve systems of equations using matrices, then this what's called a reduced form is the ideal situation. Basically, you can't simplify it any further after that, okay? So first I'm gonna make three columns here, three types of matrices. Let's say first this row is gonna be not echelon. The first ones are not going to be in this what's called the echelon form. In the middle, we'll have the ones that are in echelon form. And in the third column, we'll have the ones that are in reduced echelon form, which is the most important one we want to see. Okay. So let's say we have the matrix once again can be of any size. Let's say we have a matrix that looks like, you know, like this. Okay, so one, seven, two, zero. Okay, let's say that's our matrix. Now this one is not an echelon form because although the first, so there don't even down zero rows, I have to worry about that. Um, in every non-zero row, the first entry from left to right is a one. That's true in the first row, but not in the second row. Okay, this is is not an echelon form. So what would be echelon form? Well, if we had a similar matrix, it looked like maybe like this. If it was look like that, that would be a matrix in echelon form because the first row from left to right, the first entry in every row is one. That's our second condition. And the third condition, then if you have, so rows go from the top down to the next rows, the one needs to be to the right of and entries in the row above it. Okay, so this is what's called echelon form. Okay, now let's go and talk about reduced echelon form. One more condition it says a reduced echelon, a matrix in a reduced echelon form, if the first non zero entry in any row is the only non zero entry in that column. Okay, so this is not, this is so first off, to be a reduced echelon form, you have to be an echelon form. This is just another condition. So, what would make this echelon form the problem? This one is not reduced is because. Yeah. Each one needs to be the only non-zero entry in its column. So here, that's true of this column, but not of this one. So actually, if this matrix looked like this, one, zero, zero, one, that would be then a reduced echelon form. And this is the most useful form of the matrix is basically we can't reduce it any before. You can't do anything else with it, okay? Let's look at another example. This time, let's do a, uh, say, a three by three matrix. So how about we have a one, two, seven. I'm just making these up right now. So um, zero, 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 one, one, and then how about we have zero, one, three, okay? Now this one is not in echelon form because 
we have a row containing only zeros and we need to move it to the bottom. So actually this one, if we just simply switched these two rows, the second and third rows, oops, that's a zero, zero, and a zero. If we just switch those rows, that would now be an echelon form, okay? Because in each row, the first non-zero entry from left to right is a one. And in each row below, going down each row below, the first entry is to the right of the row above it, okay? And all our non-zero rows at the bottom. This is not in reduced echelon form. To make a reduced echelon form, what you'd need is you'd need um, the first non-zero entry in any row is only non-zero entry in its column. So this, to be in reduced echelon form, this one would need to be, this entry right here would need to be zero. So we change that to zero. So one, zero, three, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. Then that then would be in, it's called reduced echelon form. And what's going to value of this, as we'll see, is because this is based as simple as you can get it. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more examples before we start doing some examples. Okay, now this time let's look at some that aren't matrix that are in the same number of rows and columns. Let's say we have a um, one, negative four, two, and then zero, zero, three, okay? So this is a two by three matrix, two rows and three columns. So why is this one not an echelon form? Well, this number need to be a one for it to be an echelon form. So we just change that to a one. And also keep in mind here for just demonstration purposes, we're just changing these. In general, I can't simply just change numbers by themselves in a regular matrix, but here we're just showing what would make it echelon or non-echelon. Okay, <clears throat> so the first row is the same. This would need to be now a zero or one, okay? That's echelon form. Now, to be a reduced echelon form, you want this number here to be a zero. And actually we can make that a zero without too much trouble, okay? As we'll see, we're through some examples. So this is gonna be one, negative four, zero, then zero, zero, one. That's reduced echelon form. Okay? So remember, for reduced echelon form, it's the most useful form. We'll spend the most time working our goal is going to be to get to that. Basically, the first, from left to right, the first entry in each row is a one. Then entries below that, the first entry is also a one, and the first entry, that one, is then to the right of the column, to the one of the row above it. And then if you have that one, that's the only entry you have in that column, okay? So where that one is, that's the only entry you have in that column. So here, we have this negative four and that's okay. It actually turns out there's really no way you can get rid of this four, okay? We can always, but if we have a one like this, we usually can almost always, if we have an echelon, if we have an echelon form, we can always get to reduced echelon form. And we'll see that. Okay. Let's take a look at some examples, put all this together and see why we're doing this. So let's look at our first example. And this one is gonna be a three by three matrix or three by three or three uh, variables and three equations. So actually, I'm going to start it up here. So our directions be to solve. So number one, I have this system. So 3x1 plus 5x2 minus x3 is equal to negative 7. We have x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to negative one. And then our third equation is gonna be two x1, and actually we have no x2 in this equation, then plus 11 x3, and this is equal to positive seven, okay? So we have a three by three system, three equations and three variables. As we'll talk about later, usually if you wanna have a unique solution to your system, for example, one intersection point, then basically that's what you have to have is the same number of equations and variables. Okay, now actually let's go on down a bit. So let's talk about, uh, here I have a talk about a strategy to put the matrix or reduced echelon form, we'll talk about that. So first let's convert this to an augmented matrix. So 
So remember what that looks like then. We simply uh, make a matrix space here. And we put this separation line, you have this on line, dotted line, just to, so this is going to be the separates the right sides of my equation from the left side. Okay, so we just put the coefficients. So first one is three, five, and negative one, and negative seven. Second one is going to be one, 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 and negative one. Third one is two, and since there's no x2, zero, and 11, and then seven. Okay, this is my augmented matrix. Okay. So what we want to do then is what we want out of this and as we'll see we can get this what we want to get is something like this we want one zero 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 one zero 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 one so that's in this in this case that would be our reduced echelon form for this matrix as we'll see we can get to this and then once we have it in this form of course, we don't know what these numbers are here yet. That's our goal to find those numbers. Once we have it in that form, then we can easily find the solutions of our equations. Because x1 will be this, x2 will be this, x3 will be this. Okay, this is what we want. So when we get there is we want to basically put this in, in reduced echelon form. Okay, now I have a strategy over here how to do that. This is one way to do it. Okay. It says first find the leftmost column that contains a non-zero entry, and actually they all do. Okay, necessary exchange the first row with another row, so the first non-zero column has a non-zero entry in that row. So for example, if this, if this was a zero right here, then you want to switch that row. And then basically you want to use elementary row operations to make that this number a one. Okay, now actually the best thing for us to do in this case is actually to just switch row two, row two and row one. We already have a one there. Okay, and so what I'll do first then is I'll just do row two and this double arrow, um, meaning that I'm going to reverse those rows. So if I do that then, I'm going to have one, 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 and we know we can't see it right now, but I have it written down a negative one. Right now, all I'm doing is just changing the rows. So three, five, one, negative seven, and then two, zero, uh, 11. And seven. Okay, of course, this is our row one, two, and three. And these were our previous row one, row two, and row three. Okay. Now, so we have a one right here. Remember, our goal is to make it look like this. Okay. So basically what this strategy says is uh, we want to make, now at this point, we want to make all the entries, the rest of the entries in this row, or this column rather, zero. Okay. So. Let's do that. It doesn't matter where we start. So first, I'm going to make this zero. So if this was a negative three and added that to this, that would make that zero. So what I'm going to say is a negative three times row one plus row two, and I'm going to make that our new row two. So first, then I need to do negative three row one. So we have negative. So we multiply this row by negative three. And then this row and all the rows are the same for now. Okay. And then if I do that, then. Uh, let's see. I'll start making it a bit smaller. It's only use up so much paper. And so I'm going to return to my original row one. So I have one, 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 four. I multiply it by negative three. Now, this new row is going to be 3 and 3 is 0, negative 3 and 5 is 2, negative 3 and 1 is negative 2, and 3 and negative 7 is negative 4. Okay. 
hang on a second. I think I've got a wrong sign or something. Yeah, I'm sorry. This should be a this should be a negative. This should be a negative right here. I apologize for that. That should be a negative one. I'm looking at my notes and that didn't match up. So yeah, that's that's important. So always be careful. Make sure you have the right signs. Everything otherwise you make a mistake. Okay. And then the third row is still the same. Two, zero, eleven, and seven. Okay. This are now new rows. Okay. Good. So we have zero here. Let's put a zero here. So in the same way, if I made this a negative two and added it, we get that. I have negative two row one plus row three. And that's going to become my new row three. Once again, first though, just do negative two row one. So I'm not trying to do too much of this into my own in my head because that's going to be, be careful about that. I usually make mistakes. Negative two, negative two, negative two, and positive two. And then this new row is the same. The middle row is still the same. Oops, actually, I realized, hang on, sorry. I, since I corrected that, I need to go back and correct it. This is now negative four. Sorry about that. So this is negative three and negative one is a negative four. And then this is also um, a negative four. Okay. Now this row is still the same for now, two, zero, 11, and seven. This is Okay, and then we combine those. And so I'm return to my original row one again. And then when I combine those, I'm going to have, well, this middle row is still the same. Okay, now negative two and two is zero. Negative two and zero is negative two. And then negative 2 and 11 is going to be 9 and 2 and 7 is also 9 okay so here are my new row 1 row 2 and row 3 okay now i got only one so that's zero now i want to come to my second row so there'll be a reduced echelon form what i want here is i want a one right here either echelon or reduced echelon form now actually this row works out nicely if i just divide this row or by a negative one divided by a negative two, I'll get that one right there. So I'm going to put this is negative one half times row two. If I do that, that will give me a one right there. So the first row is still the same for now. And then divide this one by negative two. Of course, zero divided by negative two is still zero. That's going to be one, two, and two. Wait a minute, hang on. Oh, well, I apologize. I'm sorry. This should be a positive two. Wow. Okay, just. That should be a positive two. I apologize for that. So actually, we're just going to multiply that by just one half. And so these are still going to be negative. I'm sorry about that. I have my notes here. I guess I'm not paying enough attention. Make sure I correct with my notes. Okay. And so the third row is still the same. The third row is still 0, negative 2, 9, and 9. Okay, so you're my new rows. Now, what's next? Well, I want this row, I want this entry to be a 0. Okay, and so we can see that if I just multiply this row by two and add that, I'll make that a zero. So I'm going to put row two, row two, plus um, row three, and that's going to become my new row three. Once again, but first, let's do two, row two. So my first row is still the same. Now, you might be wondering, why can't I use my row one? And I could, but the problem is, I want to keep the zero right here. So if I use this row one to get rid of that two, I would end up having something besides zero here. So I want to use the row right above it. Okay. Multiply this row by two. So zero, two, 
negative four, negative four, which is kind of going back to where I just was, but that's okay. And then this row is still the same. So zero, negative two, nine, and positive nine. And now if I add those, I can squeeze that in right here. Then my first row is still the same. And I'm gonna go back to my original second row. So one, negative two, negative two. And now I combine these two and negative two is, of course this is still zero. Adding these of course zero plus zero is zero. So two and negative two is zero. Four and negative, nine, four, negative four and nine is positive five. And also get the same thing here, here interestingly, this works out for this matrix, zero, five, and five. And now this is, these are my new rows, okay? So now I have a zero here. Now what's next? Well, I know I want a one here. And it turns out once again, this works, it won't work this way in every case. It turns out this works nicely in that, that just divide this third row by five. So one fifth row three, and now I have one, one, one. My first two rows are the same. Zero, one, negative two, negative two. And then zero, zero, five, well, zero, zero, and then divide this row by five. So of course zero, these zeros divided by five are still zero. And then one and one. Okay. Yeah. This is actually an echelon form. But we want to go to reduced echelon form. So what do we need? Well, reduced echelon form says, look at each row, the first non-zero entry in each row from left to right should be a one, and it is. But we want that to be the only entry in that row. So basically we want this to be zero, this to be zero, and this to be zero. It turns out we can do that. Okay, now here, how we're gonna do that then is we're actually gonna use the rows below to get rid of these numbers. Okay, we have to use the rows below because uh, if we try and add or combine, you know, this, for example, I mean, we potentially could use this one here to get this row to get rid of this two, but then we'd possibly end up having something here we don't want. So we need to use the rows below to get rid of the numbers above. So first, it doesn't matter where we start, let's get rid of this one. <clears throat> or just following my notes here, it doesn't matter where we start. I guess I actually started with, no, I actually got rid of this first. Okay, no, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's get rid of this number here first. So we're gonna make this a two to make that happen. So we're gonna have say two row three plus row two will be our, our new row two. What's gonna course first, new two, row three. Now I know this is kind of tedious, it's taking a while. And fortunately in real life, you have computer programs that will do these things for you, solve the matrices for you, but this kind of shows how to work. So our first row is still the same. Our second row is still the same for right now. Zero, one, negative two, negative two. Now multiply this row by two. And so it's gonna be zero, zero, two, and two. We're going to add these two rows and replace that, make that a new row two. So once again, our first row is still the same. One, 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 and one. And then we combine these rows. So zero and zero is zero. Zero and one is one. So we're not changing by going from below. Once we're in echelon form, we're not changing anything. We don't want to change this row. 2 and negative 2 is 0, and then 2 and negative 2 is also 0 here, okay? And I'm going to change back to my original, my previous row 3, so these are now my new rows, okay? All right, now next, <clears throat> it doesn't matter, it's like next, if I just follow my own notes, we need to get rid of this row or this one or this one first. I guess I got rid of this one first. So here, to get rid of this row, we just need to 
make this make this negative and add it to this one. So I'm gonna say negative row two plus row one is equal, it goes to our new row one. And once again, so first we have a negative row two. Not two, but just negative row two. Okay, so our first row is still the same for now. And then multiply this row by negative, and actually the only entry that's in there in this case happens to be with that one. Then our third row is still the same. So row one and negative row two. Okay, and then if we add those, combine these, See, so zero and one is one. Negative one and one is zero. Zero and one is one. And then zero and one is one. And I'm gonna revert back to my other row. All right, we're almost there. We just have one more one to take care of. Okay, we just need to get rid of this one. And so in a similar way, we're gonna negate this row and add it to that one. So we have negative row three plus row one is going to be our new row one. Once we get to first, let's do negative row three. Okay, we're almost there. I know this is kind of long. Okay, so row one's the same for now. Then row two is the same. Then this will negate this row. So zero, zero, negative one, negative one. Okay, then combine those. So we're gonna add row three to row one, or make that our new row one. Also, this is why we go from below because these are all zeros, so we're not changing this. So zero and one is one, zero and zero is zero, negative one and one is zero. And wait a minute. Hang on. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. This should be a negative one. I apologize. That should be a negative one. Wait a minute. Hang on. Oh, I apologize. I'm having a bad day here, but let me give me a second to have everything right. Okay. I think everything is right. Just this should be a negative. That should be a negative one right there. It's kind of one of those days. Yeah, so always be careful with your numbers. It's easy to make easy to make mistakes. And that's why that's why it's good to have real life to have computers do this for us, because this is as it's kind of tedious. Okay, we're almost there. All right, there we go. So that's fixed. Now, so we combine those. So I was getting zero and one is one. Zero and zero is zero. Zero, negative one, and one is zero. Now we have the zero there. So negative one and negative one is negative two. And then the other rows are the same. So zero, one, zero, zero. I can change this one back to the previous version. Zero, zero, one, one. Okay, now. So this is now in reduced echelon form. Okay. Now, and also if you notice so reduced echelon form, there's really nothing else we can do. There are no other operations we could do. And so this is what we want. And now we're gonna write these as equations. So go backwards what we had. And so what that's gonna be, is the first one, remember this is, this column is basically where our, our X, variable X1 was, X2, X3, and then the right-hand side. And so this is one X1 or just X1, and then zero X2, zero X3. In fact, let me write this way first. So zero X2 plus zero X3 is equal to negative two. And then zero X1 plus one X2, plus zero X three is equal to zero. And then 
zero x one plus zero x two plus one x three is equal to one. Of course, all these ones with zeros go away. And we're just left with just x1 is equal to 2, x2 is equal to 0, and x3 is equal to 1. So that's why you have the reduced echelon form, because then we essentially can write out right, right away what our equations are, or our solutions are. So this is a unique solution. We have one unique number for each variable. As far as a point in space or a solution, is going to be this point in space. So two, zero, one. That's where all three uh, essentially planes or planes intersect. Okay, good. Now, like I said, that was kind of tedious. It is like in real life, you'll have computers do this for us, but this just gives us an idea of how this works. Okay. So give me a moment. Let me see where I am in terms of um, pages and everything. Make sure the pages for to go forward. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, now let's look at our second sample. This one won't be as long. As I said, that one was kind of a pain. So this time we have um, oops, I realized sorry, I need to cut some of this. This is actually not necessary for us. Let's go down right here. It's on the strategy for solving lin linear systems equations. This is so kind of review what we did. Write the linear system in augmented matrix form. Use elementary raw operations to reduce the augmented matrix to echelon form. We did that. That's actually called Gaussian elimination. So remember, we got to the stage where it said it was echelon form. We went further, though, and went to reduce echelon form. That's what's called Gauss-Jordan elimination. And finally, we determined the solution. Okay. Now, a few things to keep in mind, which we'll get to those in a minute. The first is our second system of equations we want to solve is um, 2x1 plus 4x2 minus 6x3 is equal to 10. And our second equation is 3x1 plus 3x2 minus 3x3, and that's equal to 6. Okay? Now, once again, kind of repeat the steps we did before. And also one thing, notice here, we have three variables and two equations. So what typically happens there is we typically will have, go ahead and keep things, a few of these things to keep in mind. So it says, you get a unique solution like we had in the first example. You generally have to have the same number of equations as variables. In this case, we have more equations and more variables than equations. So it's, as we'll see, typically that means you have an infinite number of solutions. So you have like essentially one free variable that can be anything you want, okay? But first, Let's write the augmented matrix. And so that's going to be 2, 4, negative 6, and 10, and 3, 3, negative 3, and 6. Okay, so that's our augmented matrix, just plugging everything in. Now, of course, this is row 1 and row 2. Now, one thing to make life easier for us, hopefully you notice, is that actually this entire equation, this entire row is divisible by two. This one's divisible by three. So to make life easier, go ahead and do that. So we're going to do two steps at once. We're going to say we're going to do one half row one and one third row two. And that will make life a little bit easier for us to work with. That will give us a one right here. So divide this row by two. We have one, two, negative three and five divide this row by three we have three or sorry one rather gives us one one negative one and six not six three sorry i'm obviously a bit off today no, two wow okay yes. No. Do the same thing. So what we want to get is, um, what we want to have is basically this to be zero. Okay, we want to make that zero. And so what we need to do then is just, we'll do, can do, get that we have negative row one 
plus row two, and that will be our new row two. And as we did before, so first, let's do a negative row one. So let's negate this first row, so negative one, negative two, positive three, and negative five. And this row number two is now the same for now. <clears throat> Okay. Now, I'll combine those and make that our new row two. And so I'm going to go back to the original row one. So one, two, negative three, and five. Now, negative one and one is zero. Negative two and negative two and positive one is negative one. Three and negative one is positive two. And negative five and two is negative three. Okay, and these are our new row one and row two. Okay, so now we know to put an echelon form, we'd like this entry right here, the first entry in this row, first off to be the right of the first entry in that row, and it is. I also want this to be a positive one. And actually all we have to do there, is just make that so negative row two, negate row two. And so if we do that, our first row is still the same. And then this is going to be 0, positive 1, negative 2, and positive 3. Okay. So this is our new row 1 and row 2. All right, same, but what else we want to do? Well, so right now, this is basically in echelon form. So this is what's called Gaussian elimination to get to echelon form. But we want then when it would be reduced to echelon form. So we want this, you know, so this row, we have a one. We want to be able to make that zero and we can. Okay. So we're going to do, make that zero, make this a negative two. So we have negative two, row two, plus so row one becomes our new row one. And what's going to course first, do a negative two, row two. So for now, our row one stays the same. One, two, negative three, and five. And then negative two times this row. So we have zero, negative two, positive four, and negative six. This is row one, this is negative two, row two. Combine those. And then we're going to have um, one, zero and one is one. Negative two and two is zero. Four and negative three is one. And negative six and five is negative one. And then go back to the previous row two, to have an echelon form, reduced echelon form. So zero, one, negative two and three. Okay, now this is actually now in reduced echelon form because it's an echelon form, but also every, um, let's go back to remember what this meant. So matrix in reduced echelon form, the first non-zero entry in every row is the only non-zero entry in its column. That's true. So the first non-zero entry in every row, this one, it's the only one, only non-zero one in this column, and so is this one. Okay. And also, there's really no good way of getting rid of these values here, possibly without changing the entries in over here. So this is reduced echelon form. And once we reduced echelon form, put it back in terms of um, equations. So I'm going to write as equations. If we do that then, so we're going to have 1x1 plus 0x2 plus 1x3 is equal to negative 1. And down here we have 0x1 plus 1x2 minus 2x3 is equal to 3. Okay, and of course the ones that are 0, we can go away and we can simplify this a bit. We have x1 plus x3 is equal to negative 1. And then we're going to have 
x2 minus 2x3 is equal to 3. Now, there's some options here in a way we can do this. Let's uh, solve. And this is nothing really wrong the way they're written, but let's just solve this for. Notice they both have x3 in common. So we're going to solve this for x1 and solve the second one for x2. We do that, that's simple. So we have x1 is equal to subtract x3 from both sides, negative x3 minus 1. And then over here, so add 2x3 to both sides. We have x2 is equal to 2x3 plus 3 plus 3. Okay. Now, one more thing we're going to do is, so x3 is what's called a free variable. Now, technically, any of them could be. But since they're both in terms of x3, it's easy to make x3 a free variable. What that means is essentially we make x3 anything we want. So let's just call, we'll say let x3 equals, call it t, okay? And so our solution then is x1 is equal to negative t minus 1, and x2 is equal to 2t plus 3. And once again, t then can be whatever you want. You can actually circle all of that. Let me do that. Let me circle all of this. So here are, this is our actually our solutions then, okay? With x3 being a free variable. So once again, we have an infinite, we have infinite number of solutions, infinitely many solutions. But it doesn't mean just anything is a solution. Pick your t that you want. And then once you pick t, this will give you your x1 and your x2. And then you have infinitely many solutions based on whatever you want to pick for t. But once you've chosen t, then that gives you x1 and x2. OK. Let's look at one more. So number three, you have this. So 2x1 minus x2 is equal to 0. 3x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 7. And then x1 minus x2 is equal to negative 2. OK. Now, in this case, we have two variables, x1 and x2, but three equations. So what we expect to happen in that case is we have too many more equations than variables. If there are more equations than variables, then typically we have no solution. And that's actually what we'll see. So once again, first, let's make our augmented matrix. So our goal is once again to get this in reduced echelon form. So the augmented matrix then will be 2, negative 1, 0, 3, 2, 7, and 1, negative 1, negative 2. Let me check my notes to make sure that's right. Okay. So we have through three rows. Now, once again, we want to get it, we want a one right here. And the easy thing to do then is replace this row, switch row one and row three. So I'll say so row three, switch with row one. That's going to be the easiest way to get a one right there. Okay, if we do that then, we have one, negative one, and negative two. Our third row is still the same. And then now our third row is now two, negative one, and zero. Okay, so now we want to do our reduction to get to reduced echelon form. And uh, it doesn't really matter where we start, but I think first, let's go ahead and get rid of the three right here. And so we're going to do, so I need to make this a negative three. So negative three, row one, then plus row two will become our new row two. And what's going to be usual? So first, let's do a negative three, row one. And so it's going to be negative three, positive three, and positive six. Row two is the same, three, two, seven. And then um, this row is still the same, of course. So 
2, negative 1, and 0. And now just combine rows 1 and 2 and replace this as row 2. So I'm going to go back to my previous row 1, which is going to be 1, negative 1, and negative 2. Okay, and now negative 3 and positive 3 is 0. 3 and 2 is 5, and 6 and 7 is 13, and row 3 is still the same. Now, next is we want to get rid of 2. So I need to make this a negative 2. So in a similar way, so negative 2, row 1, plus row 3. And that's going to be, be my new row 3. And once again, of course, first, then negative 2, row 1. So negative 2, row 1. So that's going to be 2, or sorry, negative 2 positive 2, and positive 4. And then row 2 is unchanged. And for now, row 3 is unchanged. Okay. I was going to go back to my previous row 1. So it's going to be 1, negative 1, and negative two. Okay, row two is still the same, zero, five, and 13. And then row three, so negative two and positive two. It's gonna be zero. Two and negative one is gonna be one, so that works out nicely. And then four and zero is just four. Okay, so now we're my new rows. Okay, now if you notice, now this is now in echelon form. Okay. <clears throat> but I can actually put this in I still want to go to reduced echelon form. Give me just a moment here. Okay. So how do I get to echelon form? Well, what I want to do is I want to make this zero and this zero. Now let's go and do this one first. It's easiest. And once again, I have to go from lower rows to upper rows to make it happen. Okay. Because we could make we could potentially make this zero from the top row, but then we end up changing this. So actually if you notice we just add these two rows. So I'm going to do um, just row three, all I need is the row three plus row one, and that becomes our new row one. Okay, since these are one and negative one, they have opposite signs, so just add this row to that one. So this will be easy then in that part. Okay, and so my uh, zero and one is one, negative or one and negative one is zero, and then four and negative two is positive two. Other rows are the same, zero. 5, 13, and then 0, 1, and 4. Okay, and then let's get rid of the 5 and row 2. Oops, stray mark. Okay, and so the way to do that is once again use row three. And so this is going to be a negative five. So I actually need to write down the step first. And so that's going to be negative five row three plus row two will become my new row two. If I do that then, so once again, so first negative five row three. And so first row is unchanged. And the second row is unchanged for now, 0, 5, and 13. And now this row becomes 0, and then negative 5, and then negative 20.
Okay, and then just combine those. So once again, my first row is unchanged. Okay, so make this the new row two. So zero and zero is zero. Negative five and five is zero. And then uh, negative 20 and 13 is going to be negative seven. And then I'm gonna go back to the original row here. So we have zero, one, and four. Okay, now, if you notice, this is not echelon or reduced echelon form. We have a row of, actually this row of zeros. Um, well, actually this is, take it back. This is actually, technically this is an echelon form because what it says for echelon form, we want to have, you know, if the row, row consists, all rows consist entirely of zeros grouped together. So actually this is not entirely zero, okay? This is in re reduced echelon form. Okay, but if you notice what we have, let's look at here. So this is a couple things I want to point out. I'm coming back to so if you have a row of all zeros, like zero zero, then you know your right hand side of the division there is going to be zero. And basically, what that means you have infinite many solutions. Okay. Because that would be the equivalent of equation zero equals zero. But if you have a row like this, where you have something like zero, zero, then here's the dividing line. You have something that's not zero. I have one here, but it could be here, in this case, negative seven. That equation is the same as uh, zero equals seven, which is false. So if I actually write these out, so as equations, then I have um, one x1 plus zero x2 is equal to two, that one's fine. But then I have a zero x1 plus zero x2 is equal to negative seven. And then a zero x1 plus one x2 is equal to four. But of course, all these ones with zero drop out. What I have is x1 is equal to two, that's fine. I also have x2 is equal to four, but then I have zero, is equal to seven. And so this of course is false because zero is not seven. And also no very no values of x1 and x2 I can use to make it false. And so there is no solution to the system. Now you may be wondering what about the fact that I got a value for x1 and x2? That's true, I did. But remember, I start out with a system of three equations and three variables. That's what we're trying to find a solution to. And we're saying that basically there is no solution to all three of those equations and those two variables. There's no solution to those. Now, if we just eliminate this equation here, just two equations and two variables, that would work. But uh, that might be something different. But at the same time, there's no solution to all three. Okay. So what we've seen then is if you have a row like that where you have zeros and then your dividing line then something's not zero and then also your non-zero number has to be over here then that means if you change it to an equation what that's saying is there's no solution okay so what we've seen today then is how to use gauss or non-elimination to basically to change as a system to an augmented matrix and then reduce it to to first echelon form which we want to go past that then reduce to echelon form if you you do that, take the reduced echelon form, that's called Gauss-Jordan elimination. And once we do that, then like reduce echelon form like this, then determine what solution you have and what type of solution. So in this case, we've seen one, we have one in independent solution, one unique solution, one that has infinitely many solutions, also one that has no solution. Thank you. Have a good day.